I'm back with another video on the micro transport and this one is going to be to focus on the difference between having a light as opposed to an ultralight or a hyperlight bicycle or kick bike or whatever monorail whatever you however you want to categorize it but I typically focus on the two wheelers most of them have pedals but I will review some hyperlights that are lighter than even 14 pounds. So a lot of people wonder about the weight of the bicycle and they think that if they get if they spend an extra few thousand dollars then it's going to go faster. So long that you stay within reason, for example, you look at this birdie here, so long that you are within reason. This is almost a 25 pound bicycle. Here we go, 11 and a half kilograms, that's probably around 24 pounds. So this is probably the heaviest bike I'm gonna show you today, but consider that on the downhills, having more weight is actually a benefit because the heavier you are, the faster you come down on a hill. This is one of the reasons why Velomobiles are so incredibly fast because on downhills they can get the speed up to 50, 60, sometimes even 70 miles an hour and most of them don't even have the gearing to ride that fast so so they become a gravity racer on the uphills having something really light is gonna help you I'm not gonna lie it's better to have something lighter than heavier and for example when you ride with the titanium Bromptons I have been on a good number of group rides where somebody was there with a, a titanium uh, Brompton bike and I can definitely tell you that they that they climb better than the average steel Brompton but you know whatever benefit you get on the uphill with a light bike you're gonna lose on the downhill and then there are the flats on the flat the difference between an 18 pound and a 25 pound bike is not that great there is a difference and you accelerate faster and if you have an, a very light bike of course you are going to be a little bit better but not by a long shot so I would say anything under 25 pounds is a lightweight bicycle that would include practically every single non-cargo bike I have ever reviewed typically none of these folders even if they are made of steel or or aluminum none of these are gonna go over 25 pounds that's kind of a limit most of these manufacturers don't want to put a 35 pound folding bike on the market because most people would not want to travel around or commute around with that extra five pounds but at the basic level I mean look at the price this is some um, Singapore dollar it's actually cheaper in US dollar so you are a little over 2,000 and look at what an incredible bike you are getting yeah 25 pounds but uh, look at the gearing the quality of it the hydraulic disc brakes very nicely put together Riese und Müller style and the, the fold is really not bad or you can go f for a molten this would be a bit more expensive but this is their entry-level TSR model quite remarkably this bike also comes if it's still on the market with the with the belt drive you can go faster with the chain because you, you they can put in a smaller uh, cog in the rear a smaller sprocket but it's nice to know that you can even get uh, the belt drive for a genuine molten you get the quality rear um, suspension the front is kind of a lower end suspension it's not the best that they have but definitely a good suspension to have so the weight is lighter than the previous one well, almost the same almost the same about 24 pounds which is you know this is a steel bike the the birdie was an aluminum bike this is a solid steel bike it's very sturdy by molten standard it's a cheap bike as well for 24 pounds 
I mean, you are getting enough for your money. If you want light, if you want to get, I would say if you go under 20 pounds or even at 20 pounds, that would be what I call an ultralight or a super light. So these are bikes that are for racing, for better climbing, for various performance attribute. And even though they climb better than the 25 pound bike, nobody really makes a touring bike at this weight range. And that's because, yeah, you climb a little bit better, but ultimately for touring sturdiness and a very wide range of gears is much more important. But this is a great bike. I have mentioned it previously in another video. I wish I had more images of it. As you can see, the price is close to $20,000. This is actually made of steel, but it is actually below 20 pounds. In fact, I think it's 19 pounds US instead of the kilogram. Now you don't have to spend $20,000 to get into the ultralight category. You don't have to get a titanium bike. There are some aluminum and even steel bikes that can go under 20. See this one, this is about 18 pounds. That's pretty intense. This is a combination of aluminum alloy for the frame. It's a Japanese uh, Tyrell company. I have already reviewed this company, so I'm not gonna go that deep into it. But the fork is made out of carbon in-house. This is all specialty stuff. And this is a little bit of a uh, space frame, very similar to what you saw on the Molten, but much more narrow. And look at the quality of the workmanship. Internal cabling. Look at the colors. They have the multicolor carbon fork. And I don't think the price is more. I don't have the price on this one, but it's it's not no more than three or four thousand dollars. So you're definitely not spending um, twenty thousand dollars on it. On the other hand, see this space frame here. So it's a very very rigid frame, especially in the front. It, it's probably going to be as good as the Molten. Maybe not in the rear, but in the front. And it does not have a suspension. So these bikes are made exclusively for performance, especially the, the high-end ones. So I'm putting links below. I hope you will check it out. You can't buy a Tyrell from a US vendor because there are none. But you can import them in quite easily. There is a German uh, dealer online and there are several Asian dealers as well. So if you want, if you are in Asia, then this is something to check out. In fact, I have seen these bikes in real life in Japan because they are quite popular. And look at the prices. The prices are not bad. 2600 euro. Euro is now slightly less valuable than the US dollar. But even at, if you take it uh, one to one, like, like 3800, if you can go, this one goes definitely under 20 pounds, maybe 19 pounds for less than $4,000. It's really not a bad deal. And you get a, a lot of gearing. It has a front gear and a rear gear for something so light. I mean, these bikes are really a good deal. So this is what I would call the ultralight category. And I think the Brompton is really losing out on it because you have to go for titanium and look at the price, nearly twice the price of a Tyrell. And it's not nearly as sporty. It flexes like crazy. Like it doesn't have any, anywhere near that rigidness that you get from this design, the space frame and everything. So this is designed, this is meant for people who who need to have the shopping cart experience. You can push it into the grocery store, fold it into a shopping cart with a bag in the front and you're good to go. In fact, most people who buy these ultralights, especially if they buy the Brompton, they don't even they don't even report going so fast on it or riding more on it 
the seat is definitely very comfortable so i don't think i'd want to want to ride more than 10 miles five miles on this thing but they report that it's just much easier to carry to carry up in, into a walkman uh, walk-up apartment to get it into the elevator to go into the revolving door and all of those things so if you need the kind of compactness that you get from the brompton then I'm afraid they don't have any cheaper deals for you. And now we are getting into the next category, which would be, which would be what I call a hyper light. This would have to be 14 pounds or less. Now there are some people who have taken those other bikes, like the the Brompton and the Tyrell and all these bikes. And if you spend another $10,000 on the part, perhaps you can get down to 14 pounds or close to that. But consider that in this case, it's out of the box 14 pounds, which is absolutely astounding. This is the weight, 14, maybe 14 and a half pounds around there. And this is the price in British pounds. So it's probably gonna be at least 5,000 US little over five maybe five and a half but that's the price you you pay for a brompton which is a much much clumsier ride although it has more speed so i'm comparing a little bit apples to oranges here i love the wheels so you get a lot for your money and you have an exceptional frame because this frame is this middle section of it is not gonna flex it's a solid piece of material they used to make it out of uh, carbon fiber, but now they are using a plant fiber to do the frame. And I will do another video on this because this is an interesting topic. This is the single speed one. So if you want to get down to 14 pounds and you still want to have nine speed, it's possible to do, but it's going to set you back quite a bit of money. I think it's much easier to just keep it simple, no gears, or if you use gears just in the front, which is easier and lighter to do. And uh, accept the fact that, for example, on my Zooter scooter, which weighs less than 11 pounds, it is featherweight, absolutely hyper light. Because I have to kick it, because I don't have this kind of a drivetrain, I average about uh, six miles an hour. With this thing, you can average twice as much. Isn't that enough? for something as light as this. So I think for for people who are just, just want to go as light as possible, consider you're not buying that for the performance. You are buying that for the ease of handling, the ease of lifting, of carrying it around, and also to have a very, very simple bike that can double the speed of a kick scooter. So that's what you're paying for, for five and a half thousand dollars great parts none of the other bikes really compete i mean even the tyrell doesn't have these wheels are primitive compared to compared to the magnificence of what you get from the hummingbird and again i'm putting links below so you can check out the website this bike has already been reviewed but we can never review um, it enough now another way of getting down to 14 pounds almost I mean, other than the Hummingbird, I don't even know a small wheel manufacturer that sells you a 14 pound bike out of the box. So one thing you can do is buy a frame, a quality frame. This is a Tyrell Titanium. It is only three pounds. It is incredibly light. If you put in the carbon fork, I probably buy the carbon fork from them. And the whole frame is really not bad. You are less, it's less than $800. You can't really complain so you buy a fork from them you buy a headset I would keep it a single speed or maybe I wouldn't do this I wouldn't put a disc brake on it this is supposed to be ultra light this is somebody's creation I would not do it I wouldn't even put that much of a handlebar on it maybe a flat bar with a, a bar a lightweight bar end and I don't like this fork and I definitely would not be putting up uh, all those gears but you know starting like this probably you could build a very light 14 pound bike for yourself with a single speed or two speeds for maybe three thousand dollars 
you put it together and that you would you would have a titanium bike so this is another way of doing it then finally I need to add uh, the kick bikes a lot of people don't regard these as, as a serious thing even though I, th I think they totally are and I have published some videos of me riding this scooter I have something very similar from way back 2005 this is a crappy website they just cut out some old picture what a joke but you can see what it is and I will definitely publish more videos showing you how it works and how it is you can average five six miles an hour with this you have practically no weight you don't even have to fold it it is insanely lightweight so I'm definitely not buying a scooter like this because I want to pass somebody on a, on a molten speed that's not going to happen but for running errands uh, locally within a couple of miles of range maybe three miles that would be a half an hour ride each way very easy to do to go into any kind of a place without even folding it I don't even typically fold it and look at the price the money I saved on the subway and the taxi I have saved back many times over back in the day when we bought mine it was about two hundred dollars now this is the only one the wooden deck is the cheapest one it's 250 and some of the prices are going up higher but I think it's still a killer deal and mine has lasted for two decades here is another one uh, these uh, kick bikes by the way are about 10 10 and a half pounds here are the weights in American pounds so 11 but this one is flat flat out 10 pounds how crazy is that for 250 bucks 10 and a half pound 11 and a half boy this one is heavy when the when the ride is so heavy that's the street oh this is the one yeah because it's an aluminum deck that's why and the wooden deck is lighter and this is some kind of a it's not even aluminum it's uh, magnesium so another scooter that is like it it is sort of uh, the same weight not much heavier is the GoPad I know a lot of Zooter people don't like the GoPad and then there are a lot of GoPad people don't like the Zooter the thing is this one is safer it doesn't glide as elegantly as the Zooter because the, the the tires are a bit wider but this gives you a whole lot more security and it's very solid the way this pipe is bent around as a single piece is just a very sturdy very solid feel and if you're over six foot tall if you if you are heavier than 180 190 pounds you really cannot do the zooter you have to do this the front brake is also better definitely light ear is better I wish they had a better website to be honest maybe somebody like me will have to fix this but uh, and this is the fold not as elegant as on the zooter but just very sturdy look at how wide those those wheels are with great brakes front and rear brakes very good uh, I should say that about the deck that it's a really ugly design and most people replace it there is interestingly a whole army of third-party people who are companies that are supporting the various go pads not just this one but others so you can buy a ton of different decks aluminum titanium whatever you want you can even probably custom design your own deck and have some have some laser printer character uh, maybe cut it out of a, a metal in laser and the notepad comes in various uh, styles and colors and it only costs 200 250 as you can see a gopet has been around for a very long time and they do make they do make even motorized models this is a better deck definitely a much narrower better deck but it doesn't have a front brake which I'm not too crazy about when you take downhills you really want to have front and rear brakes as much as possible 
yellow yellow black like a two color combination once again no break which I don't like I'm sure you can add the break if you want to but this is very cheap this is not even two hundred dollars and the tubes are made of aluminum this is also aluminum just like the the Zooter as you can see they make all kinds of both electric battery and even gasoline scooters so they were one of the first to power a, a, a kick scooter like that and they have these two stroke engines but they are horribly noisy so it's kind of ridiculous and old-fashioned this is straight out of the 60s or 70s with the little gasoline tank but they do sell it and they do have some electric pieces as well okay this is it for the current video I would say most of the ultralights and superlights unless you buy a kick bike are going to be pretty expensive so make sure to take your time and do your research I'll be back